position. Mr. Kaushik Roy, President, Brand Strategy and Marketing Communication, Reliance Industries Limited. Mr. Kaushik Roy has spent over three decades in the sphere of media and communication. Starting his career with JWT Kolkata in the creative department, he moved on to profit center roles and worked with Clarion Advertising and Mudra Communications. In the marketing of Thar, he has worked as head of brand strategy, South Asia, with Philips, and later with Reliance Infocom as head branding and marketing communication, where he was responsible for the launch of Reliance Mobile with Karlo Dunya Mutti May campaign. Earlier in his career, he has been responsible for the We Also Make Steel campaign and for the launch of Max Touch, now Vodafone. Kaushik is currently president, brand strategy and marketing communication in Reliance Industries Limited. And in recent times, he has been responsible for the branding, marketing and team formation of Reliance Mumbai Indians for the IPL Season 1 and the launch of ISL. As a sponsor for the chairman's office, he oversees the marketing and branding efforts for Geo, an integrated digital content and services offering from RIL. Kaushik has an important industry position such as President of the Advertising Club Bombay, Executive Committee Member of the Advertising Agencies Association of India, AAAI, Steering Committee Member, Ad Asia 2003, President of International Advertising Association. He has another interesting feather to his cap. Branching out from his regular day job, Kaushik has had several art ex exhibitions and has written and directed a critically acclaimed feature film, Apna Asman, that backed the prestigious Best Feature Film Award at the Stuttgart Film Festival in 2007. I welcome you, sir. Our next speaker for the day, Mr. Bobby Pawar. Our next speaker for the day, Mr. Bobby Pawar, Managing Director and Creative, Chief Creative Officer, Publicist Worldwide South Asia, has quite an interesting profile to his credit. Although his journey into advertising was accidental, it has lasted 23 years and is still going strong. Before joining Publicis, Mr. Pawar was the Chief Creative Officer at DDG Mudra Group and JWT. Besides India, Bobby has applied his craft in the US as a Creative Director at Ogilvy, New York and Group Creative Director at BBDO Chicago. He has racked up over 400 local and international awards in both creative as well as effectiveness shows. He was Campaign Asia's Creative Person of the Year 2011 for India and South Asia. Today is ranked among the five most influential and creative people in Indian advertising by the Economic Times. I now call upon Mr. Bobby Pawar to enlighten us on what what's coming next for us in the creative agency land. Good morning. Morning, sir. Okay, uh, we have a wonderful session over here with Mr. Bobby Pawar, and I'm certain that he will not only guide you into the future in terms of what creativity is going to be uh, for you and how you need to look at it, but more importantly, I'm certain, going by my experience with Bobby, his presentations are always the kind of presentations that you die for because it will have all those things that will light up your mind. And I think first thing in the morning, early in the morning, that's what you need. You need something stronger than coffee. Okay, now as far as uh, this session is concerned, I think it's all about creativity. And there is a certain belief that creativity is a certain domain which is there in one part of certain organizations and certainly in advertising. Um, how many of you think that you're creative? Okay, so how many of you scribbled and drew something on the wall, even if you don't remember, have your parents ever told you that you ruined some wall and you painted on the wall and did something like that? Okay, so many more hands are going up now. And certainly when you were a child, you sang and you perhaps also did something outrageous like dancing 
for uncles and aunts, and you never felt odd about that. Let me just assure you that all that you've done from the time that you're a kid, those are sparks of creativity, and they are not very different from what human beings have been like. If you go back about 40,000 years, you will find cave paintings. Those are cave paintings done at a stage when we don't know enough about those people, but their expressions were creative expressions. And I don't have the slides, but I'm sure if you just go and look for some of these cave paintings, you will discover that wonderful bull. And those bulls were supposed to be telling you what life was like. It told you how the hunters went out and did their job. And what is also very interesting, and that is what some of these scientists have to say, is that some of those paintings were certainly done by women. And why is it so important? It is important because yesterday we were speaking about various things, and these days I think this discussion comes up very often, whether certain areas of work is meant to be dominated by men, or is it that women have an equal role? So as far as ancient creativity is concerned, I am told by none other than the great scientists who have gone by the size of the hands, which are impressions on those cave walls, to say that some of those paintings and some of those beautiful paintings were done by women. And this is 40,000 years ago. So if you started painting on the wall, if you danced, if you did something like that, it just grows to prove that we are all born with certain kind of instincts of creativity. Now, let's move forward, and as they say, it's a different era, it's a different uh, generation, and so on and so forth. So, what is it that we need to take out from those cave paintings, if at all? I think what is important for us to remember is that that was an expression, and in that expression there was a certain skill. And in that skill, there was some kind of a message. Now, if I were to look at advertising, I don't think any of that has changed very much. Because we're still talking about expressing, we're still talking about a certain skill, we're still talking about a certain kind of communication. It is believed that it wasn't just a painting of the bull, but it was also functional to the point of expressing what they would have to fend for, what they would have to defend. For instance, those were the ferocious animals that they would have to deal with. So therefore, perhaps there was some kind of a communication and there was functionality in that. Why I say this is because if you were to look at creativity today, and I'm going to quote, creativity involves bringing out, the, getting out of the established patterns in order to look at things in a different way. So basically, I just picked on one. Why I have quoted this is because it urges you to do things in a different way. That really brings me to one topic which Bobby is perhaps the best person to talk about, which is originality. Because originality, I think, is something that we have to have in us. It is not enough to be a painter or an artist or a writer. But if you are not able to do things in a different way, because doing it the old way doesn't work. And talking about the future, many of you have heard this term of VUCA. VUCA, which means volatility uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. That's the future. In a world like that, what will creativity do? In a world like that, creativity will provide solutions. So, 
While today we are going to be talking about creativity in the business of advertising, let us understand one thing, that this kind of creativity is required in every business. This kind of creativity which is about solving problems, being able to deal with the uncertain world, the VUCA world, is something that is required and it's something that you must bring forth and you must provide because there is never going to be a department which is going to be doing that. It is expected of all of us. We have to do it because the future is definitely very uncertain. It will demand that you have to have a way to solve problems in an innovative way. And that is, I think, the creativity that we are looking for and more about what it is going to be in the world of advertising. I hand you over to Mr. Bobby Pawar. Thing. 
it's technology, right? And that's changed the game because consumers are spending more time in different places other than in front of the TV or the newspaper, right? Uh, they're on the net, they're on their mobile phones, they're on. So, people talk about digital as one thing. Actually, it's many things. There's social media, there's all kinds of things. There's e-commerce, all of those things. And people live, they don't just transact over it, they live on those mediums, right? There are different lifestyles that are transacted there. So, what you have to do is, you can't just create an interruption there. The best brands, the best, the thing can't just be like, hey, hey, look at me, buy me, yeah? It's got to be an experience that you love, right? And uh, just about any place that the brand interacts with the people it wants to talk to can be turned into an experience, if you have that mindset. For that, to my mind, there are four simple uh, things that an experience should be, right? And that's when it's successful. Is it interesting? You're going about your life, and let's face it, most lives are pretty freaking boring. Yeah? Uh, is, is it interesting enough to sort of break through whatever you're going through? What do you feel interesting? To peak your attention and for you to be willing to participate in it, right? Secondly, is it useful? Because if it is useful, it will bring some value to your life, right? The other thing is meaningful, right? Is it relevant to the, uh, the people you want to talk to, right? If it is not, people just walk by, right? It's great if you're talking to monkeys, but if I'm a cat person, I'm just walking by, right? Uh, the last thing, and it's the most important thing, is that each experience must be rewarding to the person who experiences it, right? Do I get something out of it? Either emotional, which is, doesn't entertain the hell out of me. Is it informational? Do I get some information that I can act on that makes a difference to me? Physical, do I get some kind of reward out of it? So, unless it's any of these, at least three of these four things, simple, uh, principle to follow, don't do it, right, because people won't care, right, so if you want to do great, great experiences, that's kind of where it is all going, and I don't think you should be faced by stuff like, uh, you know, uh, digital and all of that, right, it's great to know the technology, right, you should be familiar with it, you've got a head start, because to you, it's not technology, right, it's something that you live every day. Huh? But that's why curiosity plays a part, is try to understand why something works the way it does. Right? How, why do people behave the way they do on WhatsApp but behave differently on Facebook and behave differently on Snapchat? If you're curious about all these things, you will think about it and you'll come up with interesting solutions to interact with people on those platforms. Right? So, you know, all these things are evolving, which means that previously, uh, you know, people say that, hey, you know, people who have a head for business and marketing, or people who are creative would do well. But I think that is going to change, right? You need multiple skill sets. Now, you don't have to have all of that, multiple attributes, but some of them, right, and many of them are mandatory, right? Um, I'll start with the oldest one, right? Most of uh, communication in one form or another, right, is a story. So if you do a, even a Twitter campaign, it's a narrative of the subject that you're talking about, right? Now, did anybody follow the uh, Trump Republican uh, Na National Convention in the US? So Trump's wife, Melania Trump, uh, spoke and she copied certain uh, portions of Michelle Obama's speech. Now, uh, that prompted a hashtag on Twitter called famous Melania Trump quotes, right? Which was, people were saying, it's like, I'm from uh, Philadelphia, born and raised, famous hashtag, famous, this thing, which is obviously, uh, I think, a black singer saying that. So, it's that. 
know, I'm proud to be a black woman. Hashtag this thing. All men were created equal. Hashtag uh, famous Elenia Trump. If you look at the timeline, it's a narrative of what happened and how people interacted. So all things, in a sense, are stories, right? It continued with Melania saying something and it went on to become something else. So in that sense, right, if stories are, uh, uh, are told by people who find things out of life, right? You can see something that some, somebody else doesn't. Like for example, uh, I'll play a spot to uh, sort of uh, make my point here and also give myself time to breathe. Too much talking is bad for the lungs and smoking as well, so please don't smoke. <laughs> That's a message brought to you by the tobacco industry. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, you have to find something that's interesting, human, and surprising. and not 
artificial intelligence, right? The 20 years down the line, 30, who knows? There will be a chip in the brain and you will have access to all the world's information, right? And of course, all the world's porn as well. But that's for you to decide, right? Uh, so, uh, in the end, I'm sorry, uh, if I'm scandalizing anybody, I'm not sorry about it, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think, you know what, uh, in the future the creative people will have to be both scientists and artists, right? Uh, you need to have the soul of an artist and the curiosity of the scientist to make things happen. Because that helps you, what a scientist does is examine the world around him and say, what is the problem? What's the problem that I can solve, right? And they, they figure out a way to solve it. But when you combine that with the soul of an artist, you find elegant solutions for that problem, right? It becomes an interesting solution, it becomes brilliantly designed, it becomes intuitive, it becomes far greater, right? And far more artistic, far more celebratory to the human spirit than it just would as a purely scientific solution, right? So that's kind of uh, what really helps. This project took a long time, I think, uh, coming Oh yeah, and 
and imagination. We solve these unique batteries through ordinary channels and watched as their stories were shared on social media. When you know what electricity is made of, you can see it in a new light. At Panasonic, we believe in the power of electricity. Our goal isn't just the development of more convenient and energy efficient technology. Our goal is to start a conversation about electricity's real value to people. With these batteries, we made a small but powerful start. It's just to bring alive something that we take for granted and say, how does it come into being, right? Um, lastly, I think the other value or uh, attribute that's going to come in uh, do good us, man. I think communication has to try to leave the world a little better than it found it. Right? And more and more brands, because that's one of the purposes. Every good brand should do, try to do that. Right? We cannot try to just sort of exploit what's going around. I take uh, what's yours and then some, and then get the hell out. Right? So brands that do respect the environment, respect the world that we live in, respect the society that they sort of, respect the people and the values uh, right, that they serve will do well, right? And which is why I think in a sense an activist do good a mentality is great in the people who work in the new communications business because you know what? That means you're involved in, in the society you live in, you care, and you want to pay Make it a little bit better, even if it's like 0.001% better, even if it's for three people, that's enough, right? You've got to make a start somewhere. And that also means that you will create that much more rewarding experiences because you're that a little bit more selfless than the other people, right? And brands have to learn to become that. They have to learn to be more selfless than self-serving. Because only when you give do you get back? Yeah? This is, I think, a really good uh, example of this. Oh, yes. Yeah. Concussion in contact sport is becoming an international epidemic. Nowhere is this more apparent than in Australia's brutal rugby clashes. Research shows that players are taking hits the equivalent of a car crash. Some are taking twice that. Reynolds is very groggy. And what's worse, players often play on after dangerous impacts when they should be off the field, recovering. Because concussive damage adds up over time, the effects can be devastating, causing memory loss, depression, and even dementia. Uh, it really scared me. Uh, I was trying to recall conversations I just completely forgot. With injuries doubling worldwide in the last 10 years, this is an international crisis that demands an answer. Our answer is the Samsung Brain Band, a breakthrough wearable technology set to literally change the game. Custom-built sensors featuring accelerometers and gyroscopes measure the force of an impact and immediately sends this data to medics, referees and coaches in real time. They can then make an informed decision about whether the player should be stopped and the player taken off the pitch to recover. LED warning lights show the severity of an impact alerting teammates to the danger yellow, orange, and red, meaning a player should be taken off immediately. And to protect from long-term injury, all data is logged so that players have a complete picture of the forces their brain has been put under. First, we tested brain band under the most demanding conditions. Then we partnered with international rugby star Izzy Falau to perfect the design for use at the highest level of the game. You know, I'm keen to, uh, to be a part of it and get involved. An Australian invention that instantly measures concussion in any sport is attracting huge interest worldwide. It's called Brain Band, a wearable technology that can track the impact of the head in real time. As global exposure continues to grow, Brain Band will accept to change the future of contact sports and protect the next generation of players.
in this business and thrive in this business? Actually, no. I think just the city assholes will do well as well, right? Because, I mean, brands should entertain, right? Your experiences should make people smile. So if you've got a funny bone in you, cultivate it. If you don't have one, graft it into yourself, right? Um, everybody has the potential to be funny, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally, right? Oh yeah, I keep on forgetting doing that. That was an intention. I'm it's a room in here. Yes sir, 5,000 rupees a night. What is the Ricky discount? Ricky call? Ricky. This is our. Sorry sir, no discount. So, you can tell me how much you can do it, is it? 5%. Hmm. So 10% fine, you know. Okay. Okay. Hello sir. Sir, you can... फोर्टी परसेंट डिस्काउंट मिलेगा। फोर्टी हाउ? तो आपको लिकी डिस्काउंट, इनको मेक माय ट्रिप डिस्काउंट। मेक माय ट्रिप आउट। बेस्ट होटल्स में बेस्ट डील्स लॉ। होटल्स लुक कर, पेफिकर लुक कर। हाँ। हाँ। दिस इज़ बेस्ट ट्रिप। सो कम ऑफ़ यू माय एजेंट। सो बट यू लाइक मैं भी खा लूँ। ओह सॉरी। सॉस। सॉस नहीं। मैगी हॉट एंड स्वीट टमेटो चिली सॉस। इट्स डिफरेंट। डिफरेंट तो हमारे घर में था। पहले पापा खाते थे, फिर मम्मी खाते थे। हाँ। इसलिए पहले चने भी तो फिर ना। चंडू कट्टी कर लो बेटी। हाँ। बस। Baby, you were hot. Now you're sweet. Maggie hot and sweet tomato chili sauce. It's different. Sweet and sour. 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 Yourself, this 
one question is, would it be cool if we did dash dash dash? And be honest enough in answering that, right? If you think that's going to be cool and people are going to be interested, would it be cool if I jump over the Grand Canyon with nothing on but my sleep, sleep, slippers? It'd be pretty cool. It'd also be suicidal, but you know that. Right? But I think that's kind of the thing. See, people are looking for something that is extraordinarily human to, so that they can believe that life can be better than it is, right? That's why the cat videos and stuff like that, when baby is doing something awesomely cute, and the word awesomely has to be attached to do so well, right? I think it has to go beyond the norms of the normal or the ordinary to be, a, in a sense, share worthy, yeah? But the more human you make it, if it's rooted in something that is... Uh, you see around you, but you take it to another level, you've got gold. The other thing is, you know what, uh, if you find it truly interesting, if something makes you cry or laugh, it provokes, not like I think it's nice, if it makes you cry, laugh, or think about things differently, chances are it will do the same for other people. Uh, there's a question at the back. Yeah, go for it. Hello. My name is Harsh, um, BHA Journalism, Second Year. So, uh, do you believe using social issues in the advertisement helps in uh, building the brand and uh, selling the products? And one more, uh, Rajni Khan has never acknowledged brand in his career. How is he so powerful in sending across social messages or any other messages with a greater impact? Uh, you know, I'll answer the last question first, right? Being an endorser has nothing to do with how powerful you are socially, right? Uh, he's a love figure. People are really interested in what he has to say or do, right? Or what he stands for or the entertainment that he puts out. And that, that's where he gets his power from, the love of the people, right? And that comes from what he, uh, who he is and what he does, right? The other thing is uh, about uh, social issues, right? Brands, like people, exist in societies. I think they should embrace causes that move society forward, but be watchful <coughs> that they're not just paying lip service to it, right? I shouldn't say, hey, you know what, this country should be clean and then do nothing about it, right? It should be followed up with action, right? It cannot be just empty exploitation of forces, right? So the brands are authentic and earnest and honest about those causes. Those are the brands who will uh, do well, right? And the, those causes have to be relevant to the brand, right? Um, does that answer your question? Uh, what part did it didn't answer? Like, how is it like helping the product or the brand to grow more? It, it helps in selling the product. For example, uh, Jaguar by Tata use social uh, voting rights. Did it help them? The Jaguri part, he'll answer, but I think uh, your point is very important. I think we should answer that for the sake of everybody here. Uh, when you're talking about social issues, you, if you're concerned that there are certain brands who are sort of trying to, uh, you know, create an impression that they are meaningful brands and trying to do something for the world, that I think is something that people catch on to very quickly. And I think Bobby has touched on that. Basically, you can't be a fake brand. You can't be trying to say that, you know, you you sort of weep for a certain cause. Yes, you could do it for some time, but that won't really work. I think a wonderful expression over here was, and I'm going back to what uh, we just saw, was what we saw with Panasonic. Uh, there is a very, very important story over there. It actually talks about the importance of electricity. It talks about how electricity is such an important part of our life, yet it is invisible. So there is a brand which, which is sort of living its life because 
electricity is absolutely critical to its business. So when it does something to prove to you that everything can do something to generate energy, it actually is being able to do something which is part of its business. And therefore, if it is being able to move the world, if it's being able to change opinions and get people to be more conscious of something, that then becomes a relevant story. So, point over here is that you just can't take up a cause and say, you know, let's do this for six months and we'll see. If it is not part of your DNA, if it's not for the reason why you exist, I don't think that's going to work. And let's talk about Jagodi briefly. It did well for them, right? It got talked about. Right? Sales figures, I don't know, but apparently it, it won FEs and all that, so I'm assuming uh, it's pretty safe to say that it affected sales. Like uh, Kashik said, yeah, it's got to be rooted in what the brand delivers or promises and what the brand stands for. If you do that, then it will be effective. Yeah. I think we can take one last question. Yeah. Okay. There's one right at the back. Two hands, in fact. Can you all decide who would like to ask? Toss. Okay. Go for it. Hello. Hold the mic closer. something which I think is important to give you uh, perhaps a different kind of an answer. Uh, if you will look at uh, one hero brand which you know we, we just can't ignore which is Apple and there is something about today's brands which need to express itself with something called a UI which is the user interface and the user experience. 
So therefore, everything about that uh, iOS is meant to be starting from where the brand has evolved and started. And so therefore, Think Different is an advertising campaign line, but it, if it is not experienced through the iOS, and that apparently is the reason why people switch to Apple and they can't get out of it, is perhaps the best experience that you can talk about. You may not call it experiential marketing, but in reality the man, the genius of Steve Jobs was meant to be that he had designed it in a manner that every piece of Apple that went out was actually an experiential marketing piece. So in a certain sense, that kind of creativity is inbuilt into the brand and it is sort of managed by brand managers who don't necessarily come from advertising, they who don't necessarily come from any specific field as we know it, but they are people who believe in what the brand experience is meant to be. Uh, do we have time for any more questions? No. Many more hands coming up. Bhaskar, you can ask the question later. Because you know... Yeah. Okay, we'll take this question and then we'll take the last question. Last okay. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. So my question is that is it uh, okay if we are jeopardizing with our morals to promote a product? It's based on that uh, fast track ad that we had a few days back, a few months back, sorry, uh, in which it's shown that uh, it's very uh, good to be changing partners as you change your growth. So if we are promoting the change of friends or growth, is it okay that we are promoting, uh, we promote such a store that it's okay? See, that question is in two parts, right? One is personal. If it is not okay by you, you shouldn't be working on it, right? Your moral, your job will come and go, your morals hopefully should be permanent. The other thing is, if a brand decides to take a bold stance, right? They talk about a progressive mindset. And that's what they want to be about. Then go the distance. So they know that there's some people who are going to be strongly for them, and some people are going to hate them for it. Anything polarizing is that, and there are brands that polarize, right? Harley Davidson polarizes me, right? Some other brands do that as well. Right? Abbas, <coughs> Let's hear this question because it's for all of you. I'm serious. I'm just asking it on their behalf. Uh, what do you think my... But you should also answer it. <laughs> no. You it. See, this is not for Bobby Power. This is not for Koshik Roy. I'm asking for the creative community. In an age of uh, user-generated content, I have, had the, I have seen how Google works with uh, creative outfits, but there is no Bobby Power, no Prashant Joshi and Piyush Pandey. They create ads. Consumer is creating ads. If you, if you remember, 200 videos were created by, you know, Bola came out. Well, why this context is important since we're talking about what's coming next? If it's a driverless car, is it a creative directorless advertising? Because consumer is creating the ad. How do you see that world? Or is it, is it a fiction or figment of imagination? You know what? Uh, to my mind, that's never going to happen. Right? Because millions and millions of consumer created things are created every single day. Most of them just come and die because they, they're not interesting enough. Right? To create anything interesting, you need to have a certain level of proficiency at it. Some of them that do really well, they're just excellent in time and place, right? If you ask that person to recreate a hit again, they won't be able to do that. That's what professionalism is. When called upon, you will be able to create something that does at least fairly well. And there are people who do that and they become YouTube stars and Instagram stars and all of that. They're not users, they're content creators, they're professionals, right? To become that. So, but to my mind, I think, see, there will be user-generated content and people have tried to do user-generated ads. Those experiments, Chevrolet, Strider, Pepsi, Strider, all of them have failed. Because 
most people, like if you ask all these people here to write poetry, most of the poetry is going to be pretty bad because they are not poets, right? But if you ask each individual to do something that they are great at, they they produce something that's pretty damn good, right? Which is why the so the user generated content that can be uh, that is valuable is when you take reactions of people and you repurpose it into something that is more meaningful, more entertaining, more cut through, more interesting, more imaginative, right? Good. Good, I'm, I'm happy, but, but still there is a second part. Okay? Yeah. So please apologize. Yeah, no, I'm being, no, no, I'm being curious about this. Serious about it. See, it, you have created, maintained, sustained a world of 30 second, 40 second commercial. What to do with the first screen? when the audience is suffering from attention deficit disorder syndrome, how do you create a one second ad, one, and two is that they are put downloading apps to avoid ads. So I am talking about that next, how do you handle it? So then, Bhaskar, you asked three, four questions. Three, first, three, first, three, three questions. You but asked, that about future, you have to know it. No, but know it. I don't know whether we can handle this in one session, but very quickly, you asked a question about uh, tribalness, and therefore creative less world and therefore that I think has been answered by him. Yes. His answer is very clear that the don't, don't start thinking that that's, first of all there I think is also another bend of, uh, that you have to acknowledge which is some of these user generated content is actually created by the content makers. They make it look as though it has been done by somebody and that often works in two ways. One is that it works as though it's truly made by some great fan who loves the brand. Uh, at times it fails, but at times it also does something interesting, which is that it actually provokes others to do it. So that's a good thing. The other part is about this this new world in which there could be some kind of advertising happening, which is not necessarily advertising, and now you've pinned it down to the short advertising part of it. Well, actually, uh, he will tell you, which is that the big challenge is uh, what they're calling the haiku. The haiku is meant to be the six seconds, which is uh, uh, advertising that you can, uh, can't can avoid. And I think that is truly a challenge, and I believe advertising people can do it. I don't think this is going to happen, you know, as, as a way in which... Because nobody had a rule of 30 seconds. You just referred to 30 seconds. All cinema advertising was actually 120 seconds. That was a standard 120 second format that Blaze would accept for cinema halls. But how is it that people got it down to six, uh, 30 seconds? So I think 6 seconds, if that is the problem, it will happen. But I have one more point. But so, you know what? I'm just going to put it out there bluntly, right? Most things in this world are mediocre including advertising. So the mediocre advertising is going to want to be not avoidable. But the brilliant things, right? Well, most of the apps in this world are mediocre. Most of the poetry in this world. Most of the films in the world are mediocre. So most of the advertising, so the mediocre advertising, mediocre brands will not want to be avoided. How can I see? But the brilliant brands, right? The brands that create brilliant content will create content that people will seek out. Right? People will want to not only see and enjoy, they will want to share. Right? Which is what uh, brands like Nike, Apple and all that are great at. To me, I'd rather be part of the 20% than the 80%. Right? And that's what you should try. And one other point which I think uh, we can't avoid is that Bobby has used the word content so many times. And I think one of the things that we will have to acknowledge in a world where ads could be challenged in six, six seconds, there will be a world where there will be people who will be consuming content which could be as long as 15 minutes and that will be branded content. And there will be a certain way in which that be done and I can tell you the story that we have seen in Google about the two friends in Delhi and uh, the one in Lahore is actually a takeoff on a true content created by Google about a boy from uh, Calcutta who got lost and was adopted in a family. You can just uh, check it out. I mean, it's a wonderfully made content. Uh, it's about uh, three and a half minutes long and that content has generated so much of visibility 
covered by BBC, CNN, everybody else, I think it has worked wonders for Google. So therefore, if that was the purpose, I think it has done its job for the brand. So we can't ignore the fact that for every six seconds as a challenge, there will be an opportunity where you can take 15 minutes, but it has to be compelling and it has to be brilliant. Yeah.